Ever since Smash 64, items have been a staple part of the casual community of Smash. Ranging from the iconic Starman to the Mushroom from Super Mario Bros. to Pokeballs from Pokemon, items have continued and expanded throughout the series. Competitively, Smash tournaments have not used items as a part of their rule set for many years, as they are generally agreed to be too random, inconsistent, or broken for a fair amount of gameplay. Items don't just drop through thin air, many characters can actually spawn certain items just from their moveset. These items are completely legal in tournament and can cause some many unique different scenarios. What's your favorite item in the Smash series? Let us know down in the comments below and stay tuned because we're going to be talking about how all these items can be used in the competitive Smash Brothers rule set. For even more Smash Bros. resources, you can check out our website, ProGuides.com. Our Play of Pros platform is a special way to connect with your coaches who can help you improve, and that's not all! Our site features exclusive courses taught by pro players like MKLeo and Esim, and you can find info and guides on every character directly from our tier list. So without further ado, let's get into the items talk. So for starters, what exactly classifies something as an item, and how can items be interacted with? Well, this video is focusing on tournament legal items that characters can spawn, but some special items like assist trophies will have different mechanics. An item can be defined as an object or projectile that can be held and thrown by any character. For example, Snake's Grenade is an item because any character can pick it up and throw one, but his C4 is not an item because it can't be interacted with in these ways. There are quite a few ways to interact with items actually. Let's start by picking up and grabbing an item. As long as you don't already have an item in hand, you can grab one by simply pressing the attack button near it if you're on the ground. If you're in the air, you can grab or catch an item by pressing the grab button with no direction held on the left stick. This technique is known as Z-catching, tends to be a bit challenging, as your character and or the item must be in motion when airborne. Z-catching is very useful, as it lets you gain possession of an item without committing to an attack or dodge, and the item can be thrown instantly after you catch it. These aren't the only ways to grab an item, however. Almost every normal attack and arrow will also automatically pick up an item nearby. This applies to every tilt, every aerial, and dash attack. Jabs won't exactly pick up an item, simply because if you're in range to jab near an item, you'll just pick it up normally without attacking. This mechanic can make items a deterrent to attacks in close quarters, as your opponent will have to pick up an item if they use a normal attack, besides smash attacks. This is especially effective with Wario's bike, as it will force tilts to pick it up without an attack coming out, and it has a slower grab and throw animation. Grabbing an item with an attack can be desirable for certain combos, as a character may be able to grab the item with an attack that then combos a thrown item into potentially more follow-ups from there. You can also grab items of both types of air dodge. Z-catching an item is usually the best way to catch one in the air, but attacks and air dodges require less precision. Because of this, it's great to go for these options if an item is being thrown at you to minimize the risk. Once you have an item in hand, you have a new set of options. Most obviously, you can throw the item, but there are quite a few ways to do so. You can also throw an item in any cardinal direction, so up, down, left, or right. Items can be thrown with either the attack button or the C-stick, and there is a smash and tilt variation to each throw. With the tilt input on the left stick or C-stick set to tilt, you'll get a slower, shorter item toss. With a fast flick on the left stick or the C-stick set to smash, you'll get a faster, farther thrown item. For quick punishes, you'll want to use a smash throw, although the throw starts on the same frame, so it won't make much of a difference at point-blank range. You can also throw an item from the ground, in the air, or even out of shield. This last one isn't well known by the newer smashers. If you're holding an item while shielding, you can throw it without having to release your shield and suffer 11 frames of lag. This makes items out of shield an excellent punish option. Next, we have Z-dropping. When airborne, if you press the grab button with no direction on the left stick, similar to Z-catching, you can drop an item, leaving it to the forces of gravity to bring it down. The item will drop much slower than if you threw it downward, but it will drop much sooner as well, on frame 1. Z-dropping is great for covering options, as the slowly plummeting item will occupy space for a longer time. Z-dropping also allows for a technique known as Z-drop aerials. Since Z-dropping is instant and drops an item with no lag, you can immediately perform an aerial right after Z-dropping to catch the item. Besides Peach when floating, it's impossible to perform aerials while holding an item, because the attack input will throw it, so Z-drop aerials works around this issue. Now that you understand how to use items, let's take a look at specific items and their potential. Link's Remote Bomb is a reimagined version of the bomb he uses in every other Smash game. This item has a weak hitbox when thrown or dropped that can combo into Link's Nair or the manual detonation. The Remote Bomb will bounce when it's thrown on the ground, which results in a long active hitbox that's great for covering ledge options. 
Throwing or dropping a bomb off stage is a very safe and effective edge guarding option as well. One of the most unique qualities of Remote Bomb is that it has its own hurt box, so either character can launch it with any attack. This gives Link so many potential setups using different angles. Peach's turnips are a very simple item with some not so simple factors. Normal turnips have low knockback and can be used at close range to combo into aerials, but these turnips actually increase in damage and knockback the farther they travel. This makes turnips an excellent edge guarding option, coupled with their fairly horizontal knockback range. What makes turnips so special is their RNG factor. Different turnip faces have varying power, with the stitch face dealing significantly more damage and knockback. Peach also has a small chance, or if you're Samsora, huge chance, of pulling a bob -omb or Mr. Saturn item. Mr. Saturn is a guaranteed shield break if thrown into shield, and bob -omb deals over 30 damage and can kill at mid percents. Peach can even throw a bomb downwards without getting hit by it to punish nearby opponents. As we remember early, Peach's flow allows her to perform arrows while also holding an item. Young Link and Toon Link both use their bombs in traditional Link bomb fashion. These explosive items are amazing for combos, launching their opponent upwards with low knockback and decent hit stun. Bomb into forward air is a common kill confirm for both of these characters, but they can connect into so many different attacks. Bombs also bounce off shields, making them easy to regrab with an attack that also pressures the shield. Wario's bike is a heavy item, so has different grab and throw animations and cannot be grabbed or held in the air. It has its own hurt box which can be used to extend the active frames of attacks via hit lag. Using this with WAF makes for a dangerous ledge setup. The bike is also a large and powerful projectile that can interrupt and obliterate offstage recoveries. Snake's grenades function in a similar way to Link's bombs, having upwards knockback to set up combos into aerials. Grenades won't explode on contact though, but Snake can have two out on the stage at the same time. Their short fuse and reactable animations make it easy for Snake to combo out of them. Diddy Kong's banana peels are among the best items in the game. If a banana is thrown into a grounded character, it will trip them for a short period of time, which Diddy can then combo into literally anything. The banana will also trip opponents who run into it, besides the player who last held it. It's even possible to trip on a banana while shielding, and Diddy has some traps to push shielding opponents into the banana. Banana disappears after hitting an opponent twice, which makes Diddy Kong's infinite combo possible. Rob's gyro is another amazing item. When shot from his down special, gyro will spin with an active hitbox that makes it difficult for opponents to grab it and covers grounded approaches as well. Rob can also combo the gyro into aerials, including a Z-drop setup that can lead to a zero to death. On the ground, gyro's low knockback hitbox combos into a smash attack or even a down air spike off stage. Villager has a stump, sometimes. He can combo with it, kinda. Mega Man's Metal Blade can be thrown into eight different directions using his neutral special, which can lead to many combos. At high percents, Metal Blade can kill confirm into back air or even into up tilt. The multi-hit properties of this move help Mega Man cover options by Z-dropping it behind him as well. Pac-Man has access to tons of items thanks to his bonus fruit. He has specific uses for each fruit, but most commonly, he'll be using the Galaxian Chip for early percent combos and the Bell for kill confirms. When thrown from his neutral special, Pac-Man will not actually be holding the item, but he can retrieve it to gain access to normal item throws such as throw out a shield. Robin's Leaven Sword and Tone Books become items after they reach their limit. They aren't too powerful, but using down throws or Z-drops, Robin can still get some aerial combos off of them. Since they have low knockback, they can also be pesky when thrown off stage to edge guard. Bowser Jr.'s Mecha Koopa will walk forward on its own and can be grabbed by either player. It explodes on contact, launching the opponent forwards and upwards, which can lead to many aerial combos, especially if Jr. has time to run ahead of Mecha Koopa's knockback. You might not think of Simon and Richter as item characters, but their holy water is actually an item. If you manage to catch it before it hits the ground, you can throw it back to have the flames on your side. When it breaks open, holy water unleashes a long-lasting multi-hit trap similar to PK Fire, allowing endless combo possibilities. K. Rool gets the short end of the stick yet again, as he's the only character in the game who can't use his own item, as an item. His crown is designed to come back to him as a boomerang, but if it's interrupted or misses on the way back, it will become a throwable item that only the opponent can use. If K. Rool makes contact with the crown at this point, he'll go through a laggy animation of putting it back on. In the opponent's hand, the crown is good for edge guarding and can sometimes start combos too. Banjo's rear egg grenade is similar to Young Link's bomb and Snake's grenade. It has a short fuse, so Banjo can get combos without grabbing it, but it can also explode on contact. Banjo could use this to set up combos at any percent, including kill confirms, it's a fair, or even wandering. 
No matter what rule set you play with, there are still tons of items available in Smash, and understanding how to use them is super important to play as or play against these characters. If you learned something new in this video, be sure to let us know in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe to Pro Guys and turn on notifications so you don't miss a thing. Hey.